Hey guys, this is Asad Shazad coming at you with a double upload tonight. Uh, another YouTube video on that YouTube grind. Shout out Dr. Yarrington. And today we're going to be talking about the bucket sorting algorithm. Uh, let's get right into it. So what is the bucket sorting ag algorithm? When is it most used? When is it most useful to use? All great questions. So the bucket sorting algorithm is going to be an algorithm that divides the unsorted array elements into several groups and we'll call them buckets. And each bucket is going to be sorted using any other sorting algorithm, or you could also use the bucket sorting algorithm recursively. So you can take the elements in an array, put them into buckets, go through each individual bucket, sort them, and then put them all together and you'll get a new array or put them into the original array and you'll get an, a values in ascending order or whatever, or do you really want them to be? So another question would be like, when is the bucket sort most useful? Um, it's really useful when the input is uniformly distributed over a range. So no one bucket has mostly elements and most buckets are not empty. Um, and they're really often used when trying to sort uniformly distributed floating point values. And this is really because that the range of each bucket can easily be determined. And we'll get to see that later on in today's video. So we'll start off with an example. We have a couple of elements, 11, 9, 21, 8, 17, 19, 13, 1, 24, and 12. Clearly, they're not in any order, um, definitely not in ascending or descending order. And for today's example, we're going to try and get them to be in ascending order using the bucket sort algorithm. The way we're going to do this is we're going to create buckets. And you're going to create, so I created five buckets. Um, basically, you're creating a number of buckets with ranges that make sense for the elements we have. So and the elements we have were ranging from 1 to 24. I thought it best made sense to have five buckets and all in intervals of five. So from here, we have the buckets. We're going to scatter the elements into their respective buckets. So one goes into the first bucket, nine and eight go into the second bucket, 11, 13, and 12 go into the third bucket, and so on and so on. If you take a look, you'll notice that in each of these buckets, um, the elements aren't sorted in ascending order. You know, nine doesn't become before eight, 13 doesn't come before 11. Um, so that's a problem. We want to get them in order. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply really any sorting algorithm or, you know, again, use the bucket sort algorithm cursively, but in this case, we'll use quick sort or something like that. Um, and we'll sort the individual elements in the array or in the buckets. And we get five buckets and in each bucket, there are all the elements are in ascending order. So that's great. That's what we wanted. Um, except that's not what we wanted. Um, we were looking for the original array to be in ascending order, right? Right now we just have buckets with individual elements that happen to be in ascending order in each of the buckets. So we need to get these elements out and put them into the array in ascending order. The way we're going to do this, the way we're going to do this is we're going to iterate through the bucket and insert each individual element into the original um, array in each cycle. And every time we cycle through, the element from the bucket will be erased um, once it's once it's copied into the original array. So we do that and we get a new array or an old array of the elements going from, you know, least to greatest value. Great. That was with integers. Now, what if we don't have integers? I did say back before that, you know, using this algorithm is really useful um, with floating point values, um, which are integers. So how will we apply this? Well, Let's start with an example. Um, I have values ranging from 0 0.42 to 0 0.51. Everything's on an integer. How are we going to do this? First, um, we're going to create an array of size 10. Um, and each of these arrays is going to be used as a bucket for storing the elements. And then we're going to scatter the values into each respective bucket. So how I did this was you really just you take each element. Um, well, first, the ranges of them. So I had 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5. So the way we're going to sort these elements into each respective bucket is we're going to take, let's say, 0 0.23. We're going to multiply it by 10. And we're going to convert 
that value to an integer. So 0 0.23 times 10, that equals 2.3. Convert that to an integer, you get two. So you put it in the second bucket. Same thing with 0 0.25, multiply it by 10, equals 2.5. Convert that to an integer, you get two, put that in the second bucket. For three, multiply it by 10, or 0 0.32, multiply it by 10, 3.2, convert to an integer, you get three, put it in the third bucket, boom, we're all done. So you do that for all the values and you know you scatter them in each individual bucket and you'll again see that they're not all sorted. So again, you're gonna apply a sorting algorithm to sort each individual bucket. You get this and then you just put them in ascending order and take them out like the same way we did before, take them out, put them into the original array in ascending order and you know, we're all done, it's great. So time complexity, We'll start with best case. Best case is O of n plus k. And that happens when the elements are uniformly distributed in the buckets um, with the same number of elements in each bucket or you know, close to the same number of elements in each bucket. Worst case is O of n squared. This is gonna happen when the elements are particularly close in range in the array. So that'll happen. That makes it more likely for the elements to be placed in the same bucket, um, which makes it bad. Um, because some buckets will have more elements than others. Um, so for best case, it's O of n, and this is gonna happen when elements are distributed randomly in the array. Is the sorting algorithm, bucket sort algorithm stable? Um, unlike my relationship, just kidding. Um, it is stable um, with a caveat. The caveat is, is if the internal sorting algorithm um, that's used to sort the elements in the buckets um, is stable, then it'll be stable. But if it's not stable, then it'll be unstable. So for example, if you use quicksort, um, that's an unstable sorting algorithm. So if you use that, if you use quicksort to sort the elements in the buckets, then the entire bucket sort algorithm is gonna be unstable. So you're gonna have to use a sorting algorithm in the buckets that is stable to make the entire algorithm stable. Um, is the algorithm stable or in place? Um, no, it's not. The inputs are sorted by placing them into several buckets. So it's not in place. Um, and then just when you're off implementing this um, algorithm, something to keep in mind, like a little fun factor, um, just a key tip is that you don't have to keep the ranges of the individual buckets the same. So the first bucket could have a range from zero to five. The second bucket could be five to seven. You know, um, the range is for the first one is five. The range for the second one is two. Um, doesn't matter. Um, it works all the same. Um, so just keep that in mind and be creative. And thank you for watching my video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment your favorite part of the video and comment what you want to see next. Does not have to be coding related. Actually, maybe it does. All right. Thank you.